Throwing copper 6.5 Hail Marys with the Daniel Defense Delta 5 Pro coming up. What is up, guys? My name is John with PewPewTactical.com, your definitive source for gun reviews, gear guides, and all things that go... It's like that. Ask anyone with either a monetary or emotional investment into long-range shooting, and you're probably going to get some kind of similar answer. Long-range stuff is entirely a beast of its own, as compared to the shorter or intermediate ranges probably a lot of us are more comfortable with. And that's largely just due to the fact that there are so many more variables that come into play the further out that you attempt to lob a projectile. If, like me, you've never really had the opportunity to stretch your rifle's legs, as it were, it can be a lot to take in at once, as atmospheric conditions like wind, temperature, humidity, and so forth all begin to matter, necessitating taking them into account and adjusting your optic accordingly if you really want to manage consistent hits at a distance. With that being said, it feels a little bit strange to present a review of a rifle that's specialized for a type of shooting I'm not super comfortable or experienced with. As compared to giving you rundowns or overviews of a million different kinds of AR-15, this is very squarely outside of my wheelhouse. As a result, we've decided to essentially present two points of view with regards to the Delta 5 Pro and let you decide who to listen to. There's going to be my POV, which is very much feature and experience oriented as someone approaching this type of shooting while relatively green. And then there's going to be that of our head long range guy, David, evaluating the rifle on its merits as related to the specific competition oriented background that ostensibly breathed the D5P into life. With all of that out of the way, let's dive right in. That's weird. <laughs> Daniel Defense advertises the Delta 5 Pro as being a seamless melding of out-of-the-box performance with the kind of features that you'd normally have to drop a pretty penny to obtain through aftermarket upgrades, and specifically notes that whether you're a serious long-range competition shooter or a weekend warrior looking to up your street cred, the D5P has something for you. Boldly, Daniel Defense claims that this rifle will shoot 0.5 MOA at 100 yards with a three-shot group, claiming that the science has proven if they can do it, so can I, we, you, which just tells me that they haven't seen any of my previous groups before. While there are a few different options in terms of caliber and barrel length, we've got the 24-inch 6.5 Creedmoor variant here, but all of the models are going to have some key features in common. Starting from front to back, the gun's got a damn hefty Area 419 muzzle brake mounted on Daniel Defense's 1 in 8 twist 6.5 Creedmoor barrel. Forged from a proprietary blend of steel and featuring a Cerakote finish for protection from the elements. The barrels on the Delta 5 system are also interchangeable, meaning that you can swap between calibers using the same chassis if you need or want to do that for whatever reason. The gun's got a mechanically bedded stainless steel action with an integral recoil lug a three lug bolt with a 60 degree throw and a floating 5 16th to 24 inch removable bolt knob. The entire package is riding pretty within this sleek Area 419 chassis, with a forend that features three M-Lock mounting slots at the 11, 12, and 1 o'clock positions, and additional M-Lock slots that run the full length of the forend at the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions. Of particular note is the Arca rail also built into the full length of the forend, which gives you a rock solid platform for mounting accessories like the Atlas bipod attached here with an Area 419 clamp. The trigger is an adjustable single stage Timney Elite Hunter with a two position safety, and the chassis features an AR-15 grip mounting block that should be compatible with most standard AR pistol grips out there, but is obviously sporting the same rubberized DD grip found on their M4V7 that we reviewed a while back, but sans the integrated trigger guard. Your mag release is a sort of dual paddle system that ejects the mag when pressed downwards, and it's located right between the magazine well and the trigger guard. The gun comes with one 10 round 762 AICS PMAG, and it should be compatible with other similar magazines, but more on that later. You've got no fewer than 10 QD sling mounting points scattered around the chassis, a Picatinny scope base allowing for 20 MOA of elevation adjustment, and it's also scalloped cut to allow for a lower height over bore, even with some big boy glass mounted. 
The right side of the chassis features a small nub that acts as a thumb rest, but it can also be relocated to the left side of the chassis for wrong-handed shooters. The stock itself is adjustable for length of pull with a rotating drum adjustment mechanism on the back, while the cheek riser can be adjusted with set screws to ensure that you've got a repeatable and reliable way to get on target. The chassis has this really attractive flat dark earth Cerakote finish, and the overall package, in my opinion, looks really good. But looks are only gonna get you so far. By far, the most striking thing uh, I noticed when first kind of handling the rifle was the weight. Comes in at about 16 pounds unloaded, no mag, no ammo, but with this primary arms Athena 6 to 30 by 56 optic attached via a Midwest Industries QD mount. That might sound like a lot, but I'm told by folks who are much more experienced with production class competition shooting than I am, that the average rifle in those kind of competitions is anywhere from 20 to 24 pounds. So it's all relative. If you recall our previous review of the DDM4 V7, the slightly odd angle of the gun's pistol grip is one of the things that I didn't particularly care for, and encountering that same style of grip on a bolt gun isn't much different. While it didn't bug me as much as it did our editor David, I could never get a grip that felt both natural and comfortable on the rifle, whether or not I was utilizing the thumb rest. Again, it feels to me like that shallow angle might not be particularly well suited for bolt guns, but for different reasons than what made me dislike it on a semi-automatic rifle. After getting a chance to handle David's other bolt action rifles with MPA and MDT grips that are much closer to a vertical orientation, it feels like that's probably the way you'd want to go versus anything in the AR-15 family. But again, this isn't really my forte, and I can hear the frantic typing of an essay in the comments section right now at the mere suggestion that that might be the case. The thought process in the precision world, I'm told, is that keeping your thumb riding high, either in a cutout or a thumb rest, allows your hand to actuate the bolt just a bit faster. And I can definitely see why cutting out that time it might take you to unwrap your thumb from around the grip might make a noticeable difference in competitions where time is an important factor. It is worth noting, however, that operating the bolt didn't ever feel completely silky smooth for me. And there were more than a few times where getting it to return to battery completely required what felt like more force than you'd want or expect to have to use, but that might be related to the magazines and we'll address that in a bit. A few other small weird things while we're at it. The gun is advertised as coming with a Daniel Defense hard case, and it does, but the hard case is approximately one inch short of what you would need to fit the gun as fully assembled, which Okay, sure. The muzzle brake is an Area 419 30 cal muzzle brake, despite the fact that Area 419 does make a 6.5 Creedmoor brake. Just feels like a weird place to cut a corner on. And the Cerakote finish, while it is pretty, it does kind of appear to be wearing faster than maybe you would expect a Cerakote job to wear. And while I don't particularly care about that because I like when my guns look like they've fallen off a mountain, if you like to keep your safe queens all tidy and pretty, might be something to be aware of. With all of that out of the way, let's go to the part where we shoot stuff. First impressions with the Delta 5 Pro are pretty rad. While again, my previous long range experience isn't much, I have had the opportunity to fire bigger bore guns before. And the combination of the chassis weight and that 419 brake meant that I was genuinely surprised at how little recoil I felt upon pulling the trigger that first time. During the course of putting the D5P through its paces, we easily chewed through a couple hundred rounds, and the experience was altogether pretty enjoyable and absolutely nowhere near as punishing as that time the M14s tenderized my shoulder meat for a video that the internet still hasn't stopped screaming about. On our initial run with the gun, we posted up and were able to consistently ring steel at about 330 yards or so, using a variety of 6.5 ammunition. Despite its weight, the gun is also quite balanced, and shooting off of a bipod, the built-in barricade rest, or just jamming the forend into some shitty crags felt solid and stable. Again, just due to the amount of work that that 419 break is doing, it was also possible to watch your shot sail in via the optic mounted on the rifle alongside your spotter, as the lack of muzzle climb made it quite easy to maintain your sight picture and make adjustments for quick follow-ups if your shot was off. As far as DD's claim about half MOA accuracy, it does indeed appear to hold up, as David was able to shoot a .39 MOA three-shot group with Hornady 140 grain ELDM. We grouped the rifle a second time out in the desert with slightly shittier wind conditions and hit 1.01 MOA with a six-shot group, again with Hornady ELDM. 
And while there's something to be said about rifle manufacturers choosing to certify their accuracy results with a three-shot group instead of five, the Delta 5 Pro can indeed shoot in the hands of a reasonably skilled shooter. As mentioned, the guns included AICS PMAG worked reasonably well, but we did run into a handful of hiccups with the bolt not picking up a round despite what felt to me like a complete cycling of the bolt. And I did somehow manage to cause a bolt override in a bolt action rifle that necessitated a manual extraction of the round in the chamber before we could drop the mag and clear the second casing that jammed backwards. Not entirely sure what's going on there, but we suspect it might be the 120 grain SIG rounds being ever so slightly shorter than Hornady's 6.5, as the SIG 120 did appear to get the nose of the bullet jammed against the front of the mag a few times. Additionally, we attempted to use Hawa, Bergara, and both metal and polymer AICS pattern magazines, and all of them had some kind of bizarre feeding issues. While weird issues with the SIG ammo might be partly to blame, it didn't appear that the D5P wanted to reliably chamber any of the Hornady ammo from polymer mags. Metal magazines wouldn't ever really pick up the last round, so on and so forth, you get the idea. These mags should all be interchangeable across multiple platforms, and in fact, we've had no issues getting them to feed with Tika, Hawa, Bergara, and Terminus actions, so who knows what's going on here, but just be aware, you might run into similar issues. However, it didn't seem quite appropriate to shoot a dedicated long-range platform at 300 yards and call it a day, so we devised a means to eke out as much range as possible out of the spot that we normally shoot in, which unfortunately involved shooting across a canyon out to 950 yards or so. The results here were pretty gnarly, but this really isn't the gun's fault so much as it is a compiling list of conditional circumstances. To avoid our rapidly approaching hell weather, we managed to get out to the desert and set up by dawn, but unfortunately this meant that as the sun came up, we were shooting across multiple different areas that were all heating up at different rates as the sun gradually begins to bake them. And this made for some wildly inconsistent shots using the same holds, where we'd hold the same point of aim, get a miss two mils to the right, then one mil to the left, then a quarter inch off the target, high? then one mil high, then a mil low. You get the idea. <laughs> Again, not really the gun's fault, as initially we were shooting relatively lightweight 120 grain SIG hunting ammo across multiple turbulent regions of wind going in multiple different directions, and we were still able to land a handful of hits, even if it was kind of through target <laughs> saturation more than anything else. Ha! While we didn't have a ton of match ammo left at this point, we did put a mag of Hornady 140 grain ELDM through the gun and it managed to buck the wind much better than the lighter copper ammunition, and our holds became much less extreme. It, ah! Lesson learned, if you're gonna be lobbing rounds near a thousand yards, probably don't do it with lightweight hunting ammo. Just... It's hard to tell if it was high or low, honestly. That being said, there's something undeniably cool about seeing that target flinch at about half a mile and hearing that distinctive steel song race back across the canyon to your waiting ears a good three seconds later. Hit. So, all things considered, is the Delta 5 Pro worth looking into? Again, if my opinion means anything here, I did have a really fun time while putting the gun through its paces, but it's kind of hard for me to separate the experience of evaluating the gun from some of the novelty that kind of comes with being able to run that much ammo through a bolt gun, long range precision platform for pretty much the first time. Undeniably, the D5P shoots and shoots well, and once you get it all adjusted to your body's specific geometry, you can do so quite comfortably. And the half MOA accuracy, even though it's a three round group, is nothing to sneeze at. But that being said, it does feel like there are a handful of weird issues going on with the rifle that might hold it back from achieving true greatness, especially for that $2,500 price tag. But for a more thorough explanation of the features versus value, I'm gonna hand it over to our lead feature value analyst, David. My disappointment in the Delta 5 revolves around four major issues, poor ergonomics, a lack of barrel and chamber options, features that fall flat, and the fact that there are a number of rivals at or below this price point that are better in almost every way. I understand why Daniel Defense used one of their AR grips on this rifle, but it was a bad choice. The thumb shelf sounds cool since it's adjustable, but I found it impossible to make an adjustment that made it comfortable to use. My knuckle is bruised up after every range session. Something that could have set the Delta 5 apart in the market is the proprietary barrels and barrel system offering easy to switch barrels at home. Sadly, 
Delta Defense doesn't deliver on this very well. Right now, there are only two barrel options on the DD website, 308 Winchester and 6.5 Creedmoor. If you bought a 6mm Creedmoor Delta 5 Pro, they simply don't offer a replacement barrel. Since their limited chamber offerings aren't great to start, they make it worse by not even offering replacement barrels for the best PRS option they have and the option that will burn barrels the fastest. Since this is a very new production rifle, I expected the chassis to offer the best features it could, but instead, it just doesn't. The barricade stop in front of the magazine is short, the forend is short, the grip and thumb rest are just bad, and there are no fun extras like a built-in bubble level or bag rider. You get the bare minimum, and sometimes not even that. The largest failure of the Delta 5 Pro is that it's the latest to the market, but other rifles are simply better. The Savage 110 Elite Precision has a barrel system almost as good as Daniel Defense's and is widely accepted by barrel manufacturers. It also comes standard in the MDT ACC chassis. It has a number of chamber options and has an MSRP $500 less than the Delta 5 Pro. If you want to spend the full 2500, Masterpiece Arms offers a pro version of their PMR rifle with a huge list of highly competitive cartridge options. Options, a Remington 700 clone Curtis action, hand lapped Excalibur barrels, and their incredibly well proven MPA BA comp chassis that does include extras like a built in bubble level, bag rider, spigot mount, two round stage saver, and a half MOA guarantee. All of these things taken into account, it's hard for me to find a reason why you would pick the Delta 5 Pro over one of several other options. And there you have it. While it might be kind of strange to present two different points of view in the same video, it felt like the most honest way to go about it considering our divergence in both expertise and experience with the gun. While the Delta 5 Pro certainly isn't a bad gun by any means, you'll have to decide for yourself if that price tag is justifiable. And hopefully these candid retellings of our time with it help you do just that. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification, because I think that's what you have to do now to overcome the almighty algorithm. As once again, we've got lots more on the way. My name is John with PP Tactical. We've got shirts, I'm wearing one. It's summer, it's hot. Put your arms out. The sun's there, bye. <laughs>